New leaks for the 3080 Ti just emerged, and at this point I think I have enough information to tell you what the final specs of the 3080 Ti are likely going to be. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So recently a user who goes by the name of Rogame and appears to be a somewhat credible source for hardware leaks just leaked what appears to be the clock speeds for the 3080 Ti, and some of you might be a little bit disappointed, but this might be the final piece in the puzzle that we needed to finally construct what the 3080 Ti is going to look like. So let's go ahead and take a look and then discuss the final performance and specs. So in this leak here, he states that one of the variants has a 1485 megahertz base clock and a 1740 megahertz boost clock. And I know a lot of you are gonna be pretty disappointed by that because maybe some of you were expecting like upwards of 2.5 gigahertz for these cards, but you gotta keep in mind two things. First of all, this isn't accounting for the boost algorithm that NVIDIA employs. So, for example, my 2080 Ti, I did some uh, testing here, and even though it states that it has somewhere around, I believe, the 1600 megahertz, maybe mid-1600 megahertz for a boost clock on paper, it actually boosts up to around, you know, 1800 megahertz while in a game, and it can actually hit up to 1900 megahertz. So you got to keep that in mind. If you're cooling the card well, it's going to boost way, way higher. So, you know, this card might actually boost up to 2 gigahertz. And another, another thing you got to keep in mind is the fact that these GPUs are going to actually be even bigger and even more complex. So this time around, it's highly speculated that the core count is going to be much, much bigger, and we'll talk about that later. But they're probably also putting a whole lot more ray tracing performance in there as well. So all this stuff, you know, it doesn't come free, so it's going to be hard to push IPC clock speeds and core counts all at the same time. You know, one of them's got to give. So my guess is that, yeah, you're going to get a little bit of clock speed, a little bit of IPC, but a big jump in core count, and that's what it's looking like right now. So with that in mind, you got to look at these clock speeds and compare them to the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, and it actually is a 135 megahertz increase over the base clock of the 2080 Ti and 105 megahertz increase over the boost clock. So, you know, it's not too bad considering. And I think this was the final piece of the puzzle, like I said earlier, that we needed, and this finally shows us what the full specs of the 3080 Ti are likely going to look like when we're looking at the core count, you know, clock speed, performance that we'll probably get, and we can even speculate on how much VRAM we're going to get. So if we take a look at the Moore's Law is Dead leak where he said it's going to have around 5,376 shaders, that's probably about right. We might get a little bit more, a little bit less. For the longest time I was saying 5,100, but I think it might actually end up being around 5,300 shaders. And then we look at that other leak of the uh, Ampere GPU from Row Game as well, where it showed that it was 31% faster than a 2080 Ti Founders Edition, which keep in mind during this test, it was actually boosting up to, I believe, 1935 megahertz. So there we're actually seeing a real world scenario where the NVIDIA GPU boost is actually working how it's supposed to be. If we take that plus the clock speed that was just leaked of 1740 megahertz and we do the math, we get 5,376 shaders times two, times 1740 megahertz and what do you get you get 18.7 teraflops so if you divide that by the amount of teraflops a stock founders edition gets on paper as well which is 14.23 teraflops you actually get an increase of 31.4 percent so what do you know that lines up almost perfectly with the leaked performance of 31 percent and as we know clock speeds don't scale linearly with uh, performance. So even if it's the case that the 3080 Ti is going to have a better boost clock algorithm, it's not going to scale perfect. So yeah, 31% looks about right. And of course, these are early drivers and they're engineering sample boards. So we might actually see it increased around 35 or even 40% increase in performance over the current 2080 Ti Founders Edition because you know, honestly, there's probably some IPC that can be taken advantage of that isn't being fully taken advantage of yet, but we'll just have to wait and see. And so now that we've just gone over the core count and the clock speed, well, now we have to figure out how they're going to feed it enough memory bandwidth. And so I think here's what's going to happen. I believe what they're going to do is they're going to take a 384-bit bus and they're going to take, you know, 18 gigabit per second GDDR6 and get a total of 864 gigabytes per second. And so... If you take that and you compare it to the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, which gets 616 gigabytes per second for memory bandwidth, you actually get an increase of 40.2%. So again, that sounds about right. So if we have a 40% increase in memory bandwidth and we got somewhere between what's going to be 35 to 40% increase in performance, yeah, that's perfect. So, and then, you know, with the 384-bit bus, it's probably most likely that we'll get 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So just to reiterate, the final specs of the 3080 Ti 
are, in my opinion, almost certainly going to look like this. Around 5,300 shaders, probably 5,376 as was leaked. 1740 megahertz boost clock and honestly in reality it's probably going to be more like 1900 megahertz to 2 gigahertz we'll just have to wait and see though with a 384 bit bus running 18 gigabits per second gddr6 or maybe they'll even label it gddr6x we'll just have to wait and see and so that'll give you total memory bandwidth of 864 gigabytes per second and you know with a 384 bit bus most likely to get 12 gigabytes of vram so yeah, this is going to look like a pretty beefy GPU, and my only hope is that it's going to be under $1,000 because, frankly, I just cannot handle any more $1,000 plus video cards. It's just, it, I can't stand what's happened to the GPU market. In my opinion, it's kind of ruining the enthusiast class segment of the market. It's making it so that it's out of reach for a lot of people, which is really unfortunate to see. And then you couple that with the fact that SLI is pretty much dead these days, so you can't just put together, you know, two 2070s and get close to the same performance you basically have no choice but to spend a thousand plus dollars in gpu which is outrageous so hopefully we'll get you know i'd be able to stomach eight hundred dollars for this gpu but in reality i think we're going to be stuck with another thousand dollar gpu but hey that's just what i think what do you think about the actual specs do you think i'm right or do you think i'm wrong how much do you think the card's going to actually cost when it comes out i'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can, and of course, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.